Viewer discretion is advised. It's the everything and everything show. Everything and everything. Not one, well, not, not two, not three, but everything. Everything, everything. Welcome, welcome everybody. I am your host, Ty. That's a T and a Y. I hope you had a good day today. I hope you had a good day yesterday. And I hope you have a good day tomorrow. Welcome to the Everything is Everything show, episode 3, which will now be found for download on iTunes. So when you see this, it probably won't be up when this is on YouTube, just because it takes like 24 hours for iTunes to check in and make sure there's no bullshit or whatever in it, whatever. Now, the banner you see up top on the screen is the official banner for the show. Shouts out to my boy, DBoyFresh212 over there at the Coliseum forums. I'll leave a link to that form over there. He made that for me. He was like, yo, let me make something for you. So you look a little bit more professional. And I was like, you know what, bro? Thank you. I'll take anything. If you're trying to help me out, I appreciate it. God bless and He did that for me. And that shit made my week. That shit right there. That's amazing. Very, very amazing. Now, today we're going to start off with a heavy hitter. And we'll talk about my fa- one of my favorite producers of all time. We'll talk about Pharrell Williams. And how, you know, he got sued for Blurred Lines in 2013. In his deposition with Marvin Gaye's lawyers that happened in 2014, just got leaked a few days ago, maybe Sunday or Saturday, maybe. So I'm going to play that audio clip and then I'm going to tell you what I think about the whole situation. Would you state your name for the record, please? Pharrell Williams. What um, is More Water from Nazareth Publishing? What is that company? Um, my publishing company. Okay. Did you answer any written questions that were served upon you by known and Frankie Gay? Yes or no? Are those the questions that... There's no objection here. Uh, yes, I answered a bunch of questions. Okay. Verbally, in writing, how? Uh, verbally. Okay. When you say you answered a bunch of questions, can you remember any of the questions that you answered? There was a myriad of ludicrous questions, I'm sorry. Really? What do you consider ludicrous questions? Tell me one question that was asked of you that constitutes a myriad of ludicrous questions. It's just ludicrous. Tell me what they were. I don't know. Do you remember ludicrous things? Chris, Tell me because, one question that was asked of you that you consider to be ludicrous. I, I don't just, you know what, when I see nonsense, I try not to waste my memory for it. Okay. I want to know one question that was asked in our interrogatories that you consider to be a, within the myriad of ludicrous questions you were asked to answer. I'm telling you no. So what I want to know is, what do you technically mean by bluegrass pentatonic harmonies? Usually in bluegrass they use a certain they use a certain chord structures, um, certain chord progressions. And so I just did what comes naturally to mind. What chords do they use exactly? Should check it out. No, I'm asking you the question. You just said that in bluegrass they use certain they chords, and I'd like to know what chords they use. I'm not a teacher. Well, you just said that you that that's what they do. I know. I told you what I do. Okay. What chords do they use in bluegrass? You should check it out. Do you know what a blues chord structure is? There's so many of them. Tell me. It's subject to interpretation, one's, in t- one's interpretation. Does Blurred Lines use a blues chord structure? No. What are the chords in a 12-bar blues? I'm not here to teach you music. Can you please answer my question? I'm not here to teach you music. You're going to have to answer my question, sir. I'm not a teacher. So does the answer is the answer that you don't know? answer you don't know? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. Okay. Um, have you studied, um, but you have not received any college uh, formal education with respect to music, correct? No, sir. Okay. Can you read musical notation? Mm-hmm. You can? Mm-hmm. Is that a yes? You have to answer verbally. Yes, sir. Okay. Can you write in musical notation? No. Can you read um, pitches in musical notation? 
know. Go to page nine of Ms. Finnell's report that I placed in front of you, please. Page seven, I'm sorry. Page seven, not nine. Mr. Williams, page seven, not nine. Oh. Um, if you look on page seven, you're going to see a transcription, um, which are examples 2A and 2B. What are the names of those notes? That's fine and face, but um, what is the duration of those notes? I'm not comfortable. So you can't answer the question. Yeah, I'm just not comfortable. You have to. You have to answer my question. So with all due respect, I'm giving you my answer. Okay. I'm just not. I'm not comfortable. I'm not asking if you're comfortable or not. What I want to, to tell me is, can you tell me the names of those notes and the duration that are depicted on examples two A and two B? Mm -hmm. What are they? I said I'm not comfortable, sir. So does that mean you can't you can't answer my question? I can't answer you at this time. Okay. Turn to page eleven of um, Ms. Vanell's report, please. Can you please tell me on page eleven? Page eleven, not ten. The names of the notes that are depicted. Yeah, I'm not comfortable. Okay. So the answer is you can't answer the question. The answer is I'm not comfortable. Okay. So you can't. Yes or no? Can you identify the names of the notes? Yes or no? I'm not comfortable. What I want to know is, can you identify the names of those notes? I'm giving you my answer. Yes or no? Can you I'm do that? I'm not it? comfortable. So you're refusing to answer my question? I'm not refusing. I'm giving you what I can give you. Can you identify the names of the notes that are depicted on page 11, the charts represented on page 11? I'm not comfortable. Is that is that going to be your answer to any question that I ask you? If I were to ask you to identify names of notes? I don't know. Okay. I'm just asking you whether you can read notes. And you're, you told me you could, and I'm asking you to identify the notes right. that are shown. Right. And you can't do it, can you? I'm not comfortable. Okay. And that's because you actually can't read musical notes, can you? I'm not comfortable. You re refuse to answer the question? I'm not refusing anything. Okay. Are you going to answer my question? I just told you, sir. Meaning you're I'm not comfortable. Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? Mm, oh my god, stop fucking lying. Now, that right there sounds like a man who knows he's guilty, but trying to use a lie to get out of a lie. Now, I don't really see Pharrell being too successful with this. Just because he did, he. He knew what they were doing. I don't want to say he didn't handle it well, but he didn't handle it good neither. He didn't handle it bad. He was up there and, you know, he was doing okay until he started hitting him with the heavy questions, telling him to read music and read the himbo quotes and everything. And he kind of just contradicted himself with the whole, Mar I felt like Marvin Gaye in the studio at the time, but then you said you didn't. So he kind of, they kind of got him right there and the whole reading music. I don't think I honestly don't think he knows how to read music though, and he could probably tell you certain notes and everything. But as far as reading a whole song just off of notes, I honestly don't think Pharrell can read notes. He might be a great producer, but I don't think he could truly read music. So the whole "I'm uncomfortable" thing, I'll give it a fifty-fifty. I do believe he was uncomfortable and everything, but for him to be up there like Little Wayne, and was pretty much like I don't recall any. He was doing that for pretty much the whole interview. What made me lose it, though, was when he told that man, I'm not here to teach you music. <laughs> like, that really had me rolling. Pharrell was crazy for that one. But I don't, I mean, you can't do anything to help him at this point because all the evidence, all the evidence is there, and he will just have to take that out because this right here is so sad because this is a man who has to lie instead of a lie 
to make that lie believable. Now, if that made any sort of sense to you, then you know I'm right. For real, man. Keep making good beats. Come out with like another happy or good song like that. But please, you know better. You've been in this game for over psh, since what? Since 96. 96, 97, you've been producing beats and making music. You know better. You know how it goes with the industry. You know you're going to get caught for this, my man. So next time, just smarten up. Please just smarten up for me, all right? Thank you. Now, the next thing I'm going to touch upon, and ever so slightly, I want to talk about real quick, Meek Mills. Now, this man is fucking up so much that I don't, I don't, I don't even care no more. So, let's give you a history. If you've been Patrick Starring for the past couple month or so, weeks or so, Meek Mills came at Drake, right? Told him about his Ghost Riders and everything. Cool. Drake came with Charged Up. Eh, cool. Came with Back to Back. Damn. Meek Mills ain't do nothing. Okay, cool. It kind of it kind of got dead after a while. Or Meek Mill came out with that, with some um, rap song where he was freestyling over the Undertaker's beat. Which was fucking trash. I don't care what sample Undertaker song. Anyway, he lost just off that beat alone. Okay, so after he dropped that piece of shit, it, it died down after a while. Cool, we wasn't really talking about it like that. I mean, we were, but not as when it first happened. So Wale goes on The Breakfast Club. And shouts out to Wale. He had, he had a real ass interview. I'm going to leave a link to that full interview because it was really good. I really don't know why people don't like Wale. Yeah, he's not as big as he should be, and I do think MMG ruined him, because if you listen to him, he was on Rock Nation, he had a lot of good music, his first album I think was good, but then his next two was trash, but the album about nothing was really good, so Wale might be back, but I think he's going to end up leaving MMG anyway, but you know, the quote that pissed off Meek Mill was when Wale said that Meek brought a pencil to a gunfight, and he was pretty much paper cutting him to death and me ain't say nothing wrong i mean excuse me while ain't say nothing wrong you probably i wouldn't even have touched on knowing how meek is and meek already came at your head once Wale, a while ago because you didn't shout out his album too so meek mills is i don't know man if your girlfriend is Nicki minaj and yes everything about her is fake but if your girlfriend is Nicki minaj and you're the only one hitting that and you can hit that. Like you have the opportunity to just, just be in the guts it. and just I ain't gonna get too into it. But if you got Nicki Minaj right there, you should you should be the most busy man on earth. And you go on Instagram and type out this long ass paragraph of you and your feelings talking about you go call Rick Ross and so <laughs> while they not an MMG no more. Like is is this dude serious? Is he serious? You can't be serious over that and then he told him to go jump off a roof like you've been trying to do like come on now that's them I'm, I'm fighting words those is fighting words told that man go jump off the roof like you've been trying to do McMills you need to be the one to jump off the roof because no one's listening to your music anymore you've been in the game for like what four, four years now something like that it's, you're still only a hood rapper so you're already fucking up, right? The only niggas that really listen to you, niggas, you're still a hood rapper. You're still a rapper for the streets. You're not making anything. I mean, you don't got to go out there making pop songs, my dude. But you're still a hood rapper. Niggas ain't really listening to you besides they in the hood. And, oh, McMill, me dropping up your new mixtape or whatever the fuck. McMills, McMills, McMills. I got to put you into this, this, this special group. And this special group right here. It's the bitch niggas group. Britney's a bitch nigga, and Amanda's a bitch nigga, and the dad's a bitch nigga. <laughs> and now, Meek Mills. Meek Mills, you are officially a bitch nigga. It's official. I can't fuck with you no more. A lot of people don't fuck with you no more. It's a wrap for you. Go do something with your life. Go back to selling drugs in Philly. Maybe go battle rap on Smack. But... You are a female. I can't listen to anything you talk about. Guns, none of that shit no more. Uh, if you was in jail or when you was in jail, you probably had a good nigga. So. Woo!
go do something. Shouts out to Wale. Wale's actually been dropping good music after he's still dropping good music. Wale on the grind right now. So shouts out to that man Wale. And Meek Mills. I'ma still say God bless your soul. Cause you did come at Drake again. And he still got three peak, which is pretty much the equivalent to Ether for you. So I would just quiet down a little bit. Now that we're done with that, we're going to hit into some real fucking news. And I have a lot of shit I want to talk about. We might hit an hour today with the topics I'm going to talk about. So let's let's play the music. Now, this first story I'm going to tell y'all makes me really believe that this generation is full of stupid people. Because... This shit right here don't make no sense at all. But a man killed his friend after binge watching The Walking Dead. If you don't know what a binge watch is, it's pretty much when you watch a marathon of a show, watching seasons one through five without stopping. Or or was it season six now? But if he's on Netflix, it's one through five. Because Netflix, you know, they take a while to get you the new shit. But one through five, he watched it. And this was in... Pure Prewit, New Mexico. Man went by the name of Damon Perry. He was drunk, of course. He killed his friend, Christopher Quinn. Quinn, whatever these niggas' names is. He killed his friend Christopher, stabbed him in the head. So he really thought he was a zombie. He went straight for the head kill. Boom. Right in his head. And he's only 23. And he's going to go to court for murder, but I think he could probably plead for insanity or some shit like that. Because you got to be crazy to think your friend is a fucking zombie. But that don't make no sense to me. Like how this shouldn't be a real thing. The fact this actually happened when I heard this, I was like, this has to be like a joke. This has to be a joke because there's no one out there that's really this fucking stupid. He went out there. Killed, beat his friend to death, and stabbed him in the fucking head. Because he thought he was a zombie. Like, what do you say to Christopher's mom and dad or who, his family? Like, how do you take that news? You go to them and you're like, um, ma'am, your, your son Christopher has been killed. And then you know they want, they want to know what exactly happened. Um, his uh, uh friend Damon. Oh, Damon, he's so sweet. Yeah, he, he he killed him because he thought he was a zombie. What? My baby. My baby. No, no, no. Like, that right there, I would have killed Damon ass. I would have been like, all right, bitch. I'm Rick there. I'm Rick the Savage. I'm about to come in there and slice you up. Because Rick, Rick and I walking dead, man. That nigga is a G to the fullest. What? If y'all ain't, what season was that? Season five? When he, if y'all ain't see it, you should have fucking seen it. He chopped up them, them cannibals with the machete. Man, oh, God, that shit was crazy. But we got to do better. <coughs> Excuse me. Because, I mean, it was in New Mexico. It was in New Mexico. It wasn't in, like, New York or Florida. Something where you think with that would happen at. Or, like, Colorado, one of them crazy places. But that shit's right there. I don't think it was just alcohol. Because if you're drunk, you're not, you know, going to kill somebody because you're drunk. He had to be off something. I would guess he had maybe some shrooms or some psychedelic drug because that's the only reason why I could honestly believe that he thought his friend was a fucking zombie. I've watched Dexter from season one to the last season. I didn't think, you know... The the my the cop that lives next to me uh next door is a fucking killer. He's chopping up bodies, and I just don't know. And if I do find out, I'm gonna be next. I don't. Uh, maybe it was an excuse. Maybe he wanted a reason to kill his friend. Maybe his friend owed him some money, and he wasn't paying up. Maybe he was just like, man, I'm about tired of you, and he's just like, I don't know, stabbed him in the fucking skull. But he's going to jail. He probably will get life. I don't know if they had the uh, death sentence out there in New Mexico, because I believe. <clears throat> I believe if you kill anyone, you should honestly be killed. I, I, that's how I believe. So you couldn't have me running 
a miracle or whatever. Because if you kill somebody, <coughs> excuse me, if you kill somebody, I'm putting you up on that chair with the quickness. You ain't getting no last meal, no none of that shit. As soon as you do it, get ready to be on that chair because you're getting fried up, burnt and crispy. Burnt and crispy, okay? Because that right there... And I don't want to laugh, but that right is... Oh, man. That's just crazy, y'all. That is just crazy. Now, the next thing I'm going to touch upon is going to be the real personal side of the show. And I'm going to talk about some stuff that happened around where I live once again. I'm from Connecticut. And, like, I keep on telling people, Connecticut isn't what y'all make it seem. Connecticut isn't, you know, our rich white people and whatever you may think it is down here in Connecticut. It's none of that. Now, over the weekend, I don't really watch the news, but I see my dad watching the news. So I was like, let me let me see what's going on in Connecticut. And this is going to involve around other stuff that happened around, you know, America. Because this happens a lot. Now, a man had child pornography. Okay, he's a 20, he's 21. 21 years old. His name is Tyler Kozak. <laughs> he had charges on him. They went to his house and found he had laptops, memory devices, you know, flash drives, a tablet, cell phone, all that. All that. They said they suspected it to be child pornography and they charged him with it. You're 21 years old. I don't give a fuck how old you are. This right here, I don't know what type of fetish this is and why you want to look at a little kids and sexual activities, but this shit right here has to stop. This shit right here has to stop. This is sick. This is sick. Like, what happened with the subway dude, Jared? That that blew my fucking mind because I'm like the, the nigga that eats subways and lost all that weight from eating fucking sandwiches, even though he really didn't lose all that weight from eating fucking sandwiches. He's over there watching child pornography? This shit, you should be ashamed of yourself. You should be exiled somewhere. You shouldn't even, because once you, once you get caught for this, you, you, you can't do nothing with your life. You cannot do nothing with your life after you get caught for child pornography. This is the sickest, one of the sickest things you can do. And... I don't know how you can live with yourself knowing you do that. Like, how do you how do you sit there and, and watch video footage of l little kids fondling each other and whatever the case may be? How? I don't know how you can live with yourself as a human being. Like, this right here lets me know that as a human race, we are some very fucked up people. We are some very fucked up people. And this shit right here happens a lot. A lot. So this isn't some new shit that just start sprouting about. Grown ass people have been watching child pornography for the longest. And those are the sick people we don't need in this country. This right here, I just, it makes me so sad. It makes me so sad because... First off, who who are the people even forcing kids to to partake in activity like this? Those are the people we also need to be worried about. This whole thing needs to be stopped because it's been going on. We have to stop this. We have to stop this. I don't, I don't know how. I don't know nothing about that, but we have to stop this. This right here is, is, is unacceptable. I really don't even know what to say. But this shit right here as a whole, that shit has to stop. Government, I don't know if you need to just... Put cameras or spy on us 24-7 if you're not doing it already. But maybe I need to. Maybe I need to. Because if we could stop shit like this. And we could stop these sick people. The world just might be that much better. It might be that much better. Because this right here is. Is, is fucking disgusting. It, it really is. And to make matters even worse. If you thought that was the only bad thing that happened in Connecticut, because believe me, it's not. There's a man by the name of Joshua, fuck his last name, charged with sexually assaulting a 14-year-old girl. He is on bond 
for ten thousand dollars, and I hope he doesn't fucking get it. I hope he, I hope he rots. Okay. I hope he gets brought to a real jail with some real thugs, and they go over there and and fucking rape him to death or something like that. That's what you deserve. Fuck a death sentence. You deserve to be raped to death because you no, no means no. And even besides that, she's fucking fourteen. She's fourteen. You're thirty. She is fourteen years old. She's still a baby. You are thirty years old. Thirty. Are you are you that fucking sick? Are you that fucking lonely? To where you can't find someone your own your own fucking age? Fuck. I mean, it's not that hard nowadays. I mean, girls are just throwing away their pussy. You could you could have. Be be a real man, you know. When when you know, ask some friends around and hooked up with one of their friends and met a nice girl. You could have, uh, um, I don't know, went on fucking e harmony or some shit like that. You could have went on any of those sites. You could even went on back pages and found a fucking slut or something like that if you really wanted to. But the man even looks like I'm not gonna put up his picture. I'm not. But this man looks like he he you know he wants to. Sexual assault young girls. He looks like that type of person. He looks fucking sick. And as I'm looking at his at his picture now, I'm getting even more mad than I was before I even read the fucking article. This shit, this human race, this shit, our generation, these people, is scaring me. I don't want my kids, when I have kids, I don't want them to grow up in the world knowing there might be, you know, a 1% chance that someone 20 years older than you might want to hurt you and rape you. I don't want there being a 1% chance of that. Not at all. Not at all. He, If he gets out on bond, something's wrong. I don't give a fuck if it's his friends or family because he doesn't deserve to be out of jail. He should just sit in there and rot. You shouldn't even gather $10,000 for him. Not at all. Not even a hundred dollars. Let him sit in there, let him run, and let him think about his choices. Because if he does get out on bond, if he does happen to get that ten thousand dollars, he are a sexual offender. What does that mean? Everyone knows. When you're a sexual offender, everyone knows. When you move in, when you move away from your neighborhood and wanna start over and you move somewhere else, you have to go door. By door and tell those people I am a registered sex offender. You have to do that so they know to stay the fuck away from you. Because this shit right here, it happens too much, man. I don't know what's up with, you know, certain males. So I think some males just don't like hearing the word no or or maybe they have this sense of control that they feel like they need to show or some shit like that. I don't know what it is. I don't I don't know what it is, but no means no. I'm not even talking about the young girl anymore. Now I'm talking about something totally different. If you're a guy and maybe maybe you're you're a real handsome dude or whatever the case may be, and you think you get every girl any girl you want. If you go up to a girl, you know you try to, you know, talk your way into, you know, getting some, and she says no, and you still try to push it, and she says no again. It's over. No means no. No doesn't mean maybe. No doesn't mean later. No doesn't mean soon. No means fucking no. After that, you just leave. You leave or, or, or say sorry or something like that. But this shit right here, we have to do better. We have to... This could, oh man, this shit right here, it really pisses me off. We we have to do better. This happens too often. I hear something like this at least every month or so. And that's a month too many. We have to smarten up. We have to do better. Because I, I don't know where we can go from this. Every time I turn on the news, it's something bad. And I know it's the news job to really show everything that's bad. They don't really show good things on the news because that doesn't bring ratings or whatever the case may be. I understand that. I understand that. But 
I can't watch the news because of shit like this. There's another story on here too that I've seen on the news. I don't have the article for this, but I just seen it on the news for a quick second and I turned away. A mother left her child in the house full of drugs. Full of fucking drugs. You know how shitty of a parent you have to be to do that? Why would you even have drugs in your house while your child is there? Like, is, is there common sense anymore in this world? Is there? That shit right there, you should... Hopefully she had her child taken away from her with the quickness. And that right there, that really sucks for the kid. Because... Every child that is born, regardless of how the parents are, has a chance of being great. Remember, remember that. Every child that is born has a chance of being great. But if you're a shitty parent, that reflects on them. And now you just fucked up their life. You don't know what that kid's going to be when he grows up. You're a good parent. You never know. Your kid might be the next president. Your kid might be the next Steve Jobs. Your kid might be the next fucking Oprah. You don't know that because you're a shitty parent. You don't care. The thing with some is like some parents want their kids to be just like them. But you have to understand. Kids have their own life and their own vision and their own dreams. Yeah, they they reflect on you and they're a part of you. And they might take some things from you and they are like you. But at the end of the day, they're their own person. So the only thing you could do is try to support them. But when you're out here leaving your kids in a house full of drugs and probably had people in there, base heads and all types of crazy shit, that's not a good look for any of them. That right, we just have to do better. Because I can't, this shit's really bringing me down right now. It's just fucking crazy. It's ridiculous. And I don't know. It's, it's always going to be fucked up people. You can't stop that. You you just can't stop that. There's always going to be fucked up people. So, it is what it is. Fuck it. I mean, it is what it is. Not fuck it, but it is what it is. There ain't nothing you could really do about it. You can't stop it because you don't know what's going on 24-7. No one does. This is a person of interest. We don't have machines and shit. So, I don't know. And my nose is about stuffy as hell, but we're going to end it right there. This has been episode three. And we have the Twitter up. We have the Instagram up. You know, I'm trying to make this really big. I ask you guys for topics and everything. This is a show for the people. I don't I don't do this just, you know, for myself. I, I just like want to hear what y'all think and topics y'all think of and what y'all think about the topics I talked about today. I, the communication is key. And that's what I try to establish here. Now... This will be on iTunes, like I said. When this is up on YouTube, it should be up on iTunes the following day. I'm not, I'm still not sure how that works. And once again, just out the D Boy Fresh Two One Two for the banner slash logo for the show. This has been everything and everything. Episode three, and I will see you guys next week.